Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Steelers Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Ribeiro from SteelersSanctuary.com, and this is my co-host, David Corum. Say hi, Dave. What's up, everybody? Well, this preseason game against Jacksonville was like a totally different game than the one we saw on uh, last Saturday. Offense struggled a little bit. Defense was a little better. Um, nowhere near as exciting as the first one. Uh, let's start with a little housekeeping first, though. Players that didn't play... Uh, Najee Harris, Cam Hayward, Montrevious Adams, Arthur Mollette, Watt again, Highsmith, and Austin. Austin's the one that's the most concerning at this point. Hasn't practiced in a while. I'm starting to get worried that he might not make the beginning of the season. Yeah, I don't – it's not looking good, dude. I, <laughs> I, I thought the boot came off, though, didn't it? The boot did come off, but he still hasn't even – suited up or practiced I, anything i don't know maybe they're just being cautious did you say why didn't play because i thought he played he played a series or two didn't he uh I, he did uh, did he um no it was not, like not, one... T, not tj uh derek oh derek didn't play. <laughs> i just yeah, tj you had I, a sack actually i yeah as i was gonna say i thought I, I i didn't realize you're talking about derek uh yeah dude i why are we paying this guy again i don't <sighs> God, i'm God, trying God, to God, 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 but uh, no yeah. major injuries in the game. That was a good sign. I yeah. had to double check because I watched the game. I didn't see anybody come off. And I'm like, I got to double check this because usually at least one or two guys get dinged up. But it looks like nobody got anything. That's probably like the best thing that came out of this fucking game. Yeah. Honestly. Like. You're absolutely right. <sighs> I just. that Well, that and Kenny Pickett. We'll get to him later. But. Right. That's really. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. go ahead. Um, yeah. The run defense a little better this time. Uh, Travis Etienne only went eight for 29. That's only like a 3.6 per yard per carry. So run defense was better. Tyson Alo Alo was back. So I guess well, I was going to say, I was going to yeah. say interesting how Alo Alo is back and all of a sudden yeah. the run game looks a lot better, huh? And Ogan Joby got out there a little bit too. So oh, yeah, he was, we talked about on the, the, our last podcast, he hadn't practiced in a couple of days. I was a little worried about him, but he did play. So. Well, I was, was surprised good. to see Alo Alo out there. Like I didn't, I didn't see that coming to be honest with you. Yeah, that's the other thing we talked about. We just put him in bubble wrap and not play him at all. But that's not the way Tomlin rolls. He, he's going to no. have you out there if you can. So, but yeah, it was it was nice to see them not get gashed as bad. It, you could you could tell that there was definitely a difference in the run D, and it was definitely that for sure. 100%. I mean, Alo, I mean, I'm just thank God Alo Alis for now healthy and, and hopefully yeah. it continues that way for the rest of the season because that's him and Ogan Joby and Hayward, dude. That that's the three. If any of them go down, they're cooked. Like I, I just. Yeah. They've got some pretty good depth, but you're right. Those starters are key. Those starters are key. All right, let's start uh, position by position. Quarterback, Mitch, pretty good. He was running for his life pretty much every snap. He went five for eight, 60 yards passing, 7.5 yards per re uh, reception. Not bad. I don't even know how the fuck you evaluate him. Like, no, I know. My dude was running for his goddamn life. Like, it was constant. I'm sitting there like, Jesus, this guy's running backwards, forwards, doing spins and everything. Like, just <laughs> trying to, like, he looked like a mouse trapped in a corner. <laughs> like, he was it, was, it was insane. It was, it was rough to watch. Like, it was like, God. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad he didn't get hurt. Like, I'm, I thought he was going to get clobbered. There was a couple times where, I, dude, if, could you imagine if that was Ben? Oh, my okay, God. There would have been four sacks easily. He'd have got carried out on the stretcher. Yeah, yeah, easily. Like, I, th that was so bad. Like it's a good point. I didn't even think of that. If that was Ben back there, forget it. Like, like think about this. Compared to last week's game to start the first series, I mean, they absolutely just marched down the field. I mean, he was a little under duress, a little bit, like you know, off and on. But that there was just. It was almost like the alignment were just going, "Hey, go for it, buddy," and, and they were just just teeing off, they going at him. Like, I, I, it was just strange. It was. It was bad. It was real bad. And I, it was so hard to evaluate him because I felt like he was – some of his throws were definitely just getting rid of the ball so he doesn't get killed. I, and I'm not trying to defend him. I just I – just, I felt – you know, it's like, my God, like he had zero protection. Like it was so bad. And considering how much pressure he was under, his, yard, his numbers are pretty good. I mean, five of eight, when you're running for your life for 60 yards, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, he uh, had a couple passes I thought were really nice. I like that one to uh, Claypool 
for mm-hmm. first down. I thought that was that nice. Slot fade they did. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, he had very another nice one down the middle. I forget who it was. The only one I, the only one I didn't like, and I, I guess you could, I don't know if you want to say it's his fault or, or uh, Deontay Johnson was that one where Deontay got free and it, it was, he was running for his life, but he got loose and like, yeah, he missed Deontay that one. was it. Yeah. yeah I, if he would have put a little bit more air under it, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah. yeah I, I thought so too. But then I saw somebody say that, that Deontay Johnson screwed it up. And I'm like, well, the ball was not even near him. So how the hell is that his fault? Yeah. But, I don't think so. No. But uh, Kenny Pickett uh, was the big story. He was did, awesome again. Six of seven, 76 yards and a touchdown, 9.5 yards per reception. Pretty good pushing the ball a little bit further down here than he usually does, but he was awesome. Uh, this had is a 151 point. point, what one, yeah, 151, like point one rating. Like, Jesus, dude. This is getting to the point now where you have to give him serious consideration for the starting job. I hate to say it, but he has played nearly flawless football. And this was with the starters this time, and most of Jacksonville starters on defense, too. Well, that's what Jackson I was going to ask. I was, I was curious because it seemed like. He had better pass protection. Did you I think the line settled down a little bit for like, this series? So I, I was just curious. Did. So it made me curious whether or not the D line for Jacksonville came out. Cause it just seemed like it wasn't he was just wasn't under duress as bad as Trubisky. And I I was just you like, know, you know, what you know, I wonder if that's what happened, or just like you said, maybe the O line settled down a little bit, or maybe Kendrick Green got taken the fuck out of the game and they put in dots and more. We'll, we'll talk about or, him because I'm gonna go <laughs> crazy on him, but Here's what I wrote in my notes, dude. (laughs) Kenny Pickett is more decisive and he seems more on time than even Trubisky. And that might have something to do with why he's not getting pressured as much either. He reads and gets rid of the ball in an instant. Dude, he was putting putting the ball in spots. Like, he would release the ball. And I mean, seriously, the wide receiver hadn't even broke yet. But he put it there. Like yes, he put it about. right where the receiver needed to be. Like I was very impressed with that. Like most of his passes are not really long passes. He's really, it's really like dink and dunk, but like some of those passes though are just so on the money and it just seems so cool, calm and collective. If you told me, if you didn't tell me he was a rookie, I wouldn't you know. Never know. No, you would, you never, would know. never fucking know it. Like, it's just, I don't know, man. Like he plays, he plays like a seasoned quarterback already. It's just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just can't get over how calm he is. And like, he never seems like anything gets to him at all. Like, I, it's, I mean, it's a great thing to have, you know, I'm, I'm glad. It's just like, wow, for a rookie, it's, it's, it's impressive, dude. It's yeah. impressive. And you know what I noticed about him too, that is a glaring difference from Ben Roethlisberger. He hits wide receivers in stride. They don't have to stop. They don't have to turn their body. They don't have to slow down. Yep. He hits them in stride and they go running. And when you throw short passes and you hit a receiver in stride, that's how you get yards after catch because now they can take it in full speed and go rather than slow down, turn around, get killed from behind. It's a big difference. And Pickett and Trubisky to a lesser extent, they put the ball on target. And Ben was, especially the last couple of years of his career, was just sling it out there and let the receiver catch it. Yep. I'm it was, it felt like guys. it felt like he was saying, "Fuck it, someone's down." <laughs> yeah, that's, what, <laughs> that's what, exactly. Like, you know, yeah, no, I, I get it. Mason Rudolph, very good again. Seventeen to twenty-one, one hundred and twenty-seven yards, a touchdown, only six yards per reception. But what minus the safety? Like, yeah, that safety know. was a bad decision. Other than that, like, but again, too. he was also under duress again too. Like he was under yes, duress was. too. It was like, you know, I just. All three QBs, I felt bad for Trubisky and Rudolph the most. It felt like they were under the most duress compared to compared to Pickett, and I can't figure out why. It's just it's just one of them things. But but uh, besides the safety, yeah, after that, Rudolph was fine. I mean, hey, he went down the field, got the winning touchdown, right? I mean, yep. you know, I so I just they have a I want to say they have a good problem, and that is they have three quarterbacks that are yet to play like shit. Yeah, playing at a high level, all three all three are playing at a good level. So it's like, shit. All right. You know, if everybody's going to play at this level, then we'll be all right. I, dude, a lot of people are more down on Trubisky than they are Rudolph and, and, and Kenny, like, you know, you got your, your pit people, your pro hardcore Kenny picket people that they're saying he needs to be the quarterback. It's time. He's already there. Like he's established. He's cool, calm, collective. He can handle this. Let's go. And then you got your hardcore Mason guys are saying, Hey, Mason has every right to be the guy. And, and, and then you got some people that really like Trubisky. And you're like, look, 
Trubisky was getting killed out there running for his life to start the game until the offensive line finally settled in. But by the time they settled in, he was already gone. So the biggest thing for me with Trubisky though, was his mobility. Yeah. I, I mean, dude, I was, I was impressed. Like I was like, Jesus, this guy, he is just running around and getting uh, uh, just, it was incredible how many times he either broke away, not, didn't let, let a sack up happen, or just getting out, you know, in the open, like to find somebody. I was just like, you know, that's, that's very impressive. I think he's probably the most mobile of the three. Yes, definitely. And I don't even, definitely. and I don't even know if it's close, to be honest. It's not, like, I he's, don't think it is close. He's um, really mobile. And, and I, you know, I think I it's know a, t- a tick too. above Mason, but they're both way behind Mitch. As far yeah. as mobility and uh, yeah, I could do that definitely. That was that was what impressed me with Mitch was just the mobility, man. Avoiding sacks like literally left and right. And I, you know, that that was the thing with him that I thought was pretty impressive. So I don't know. Uh, like I said, it's a good problem to have. All three are still playing solid. No one's looking like crap at all to where you're like, okay, we know you're not the guy. Yeah, yeah. But no. see, this just brings me to my point that someone's getting traded. Like mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we've been preaching this. It's going to be Rudolph. It just oh, is. 100%. 100%. And I, you know, I hate to break it to all the, you know, the Rudolph people out there. It's just that they're not going to pay all three. And that he's doing good enough to generate possibly, I'm going to say the ceiling is a fifth round pick. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think fifth round pick is fair. And I, and it, look, um, and I just, and look, it could end up, you know, and I'm not going to lie here, it could end up being a mistake by the Steelers. You know, I'm not saying it's a good thing. But they're not gonna they're not gonna have Kenny sitting on Sundays. It's just not happening. No, not the way he's playing right now. No. 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 So I, you know, I don't I don't know. I tell people that's I just think that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's it's definitely gonna happen. Because right. because Mason's playing too good to sit on Sunday too. Yeah, you can't make Mason sit. He's a right. veteran, he's playing well. You can't ask right. him not to not to um because their third quarterback doesn't even dress. He's an inactive. So you can't ask Mason Rudolph to just not even dress and not be it's not fair to him he's a veteran guy and he's playing well it's not like he's playing like shit because that'd be one right. thing if he was that struggling but he's he's playing very well so all right at the other end of the spectrum is the offensive line i bumped them up the list because i um my worry meter has gone from low to very high in two weeks this group is awful they, they're terrible one through five the only one that's playing halfway decent is mason cole you don't hear him much. Kendrick name- Green in the fucking backfield again three or four times, getting knocked on his ass. There was one floating around Twitter today, I don't know if you saw it, where a guy did a swim move, and he didn't even move. Kendrick yes. Green literally stood still while the guy raced by him. This guy is not even good enough to be on the roster. I'm, I'm, I, I've had it. I'm done. I, I tweeted it. I Cut tweeted the, the video of it. I was like, oh, my God. That was horrible. It's like, awful. Dude. Like, how is this guy on an NFL team? He's not NFL level. He's not. No, he's not he's USFL not. level at this point. No, he's... like he's so bad. What I are we doing? Twitter, I put on Twitter he should be sent to Walmart to be a greeter. Like, <laughs> like this guy should not be on an NFL field. Like, I, I just, I don't. So here's one another of, question. One of the worst selections by Colbert ever. Yeah, yes. Love the so guy. So here's the question. This here. How bad is Dotson if they don't want to put him in above Kendrick Green? They're still rotating these guys like it matters. I don't know what's going on with that. It, it's it's like a they've been pissed at him since last year. It's either his, I don't know if it's motivation or just the, the playbook or, you know, I don't know what the hell it is. But he's done something to where they are letting him not come in right off the bat where they got Green out there in front. And there ain't no fucking way that should be happening. None. Dude, and, if they're trying to make and an it, example, it might be the coincidence. Literally, they took him out and put Dotson in. That's when the offensive line started to sell down a little bit. But they put Green back in. They rotated him the whole game. I was watching. Oh, Even into the God. third quarter, they were rotating him. Well, then out. that's why Mason was under fucking duress. Yeah, then they put Green back in in the third fucking quarter. Uh, dude, he's trash. Like he's got to go. This and is if you're, horrible. If you're Dotson and you think they're trying to make an example of you by playing Green. He's just laughing at him because he's watch. He's not the dumb man. He's watching how bad Green is. He's like, you guys have to put me in eventually. You can't go on to the season with this guy above right. me. There's no freaking way. Right. You, then not, there's, no- <laughs> there's no point in this anymore. No, there's not. He's laughing right. at them. He's like, yep. really? This is the guy who's sat over me? 
it's it's time. Stop the bullshit. He's Put Dotson in. He's probably and, like, hey, go ahead. Let me know how yeah, that works. That's what I'm saying. For you. Put that guy in. See how you make out. Get yeah. back to me when you're ready because it's 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 comical at this point. Yes. The tackles yes, I, I brought up last week. Jacksonville has excellent pass rushers. I thought this would be a good test. They failed. Dan Moore was awful. Chooks was as usual, okay, but not great. Got beat a couple times. Dan Moore really struggled, and that's scary because he's a starting left tackle. And my man just got beat like a, a drum. Daniels had a uh, horrible penalty on Daniels the first down. Terrible. We, too. We, this... we got a first down. He was getting run, run the hell over. Like, I, I dude. But see, again, this is why you don't just draft O linemen that are good at run blocking. Why? Why, why did they only target people that, that were really good at run blocking? You couldn't find some guys that were good at both. Hey, I'll tell you what. Not even good. Can you find them that are okay at both? Because we're not even getting that. They're not even playing okay in uh, pass protection. They are just trash across the board trying to protect Mitch or Pickett or, or Ruta. They can't. They can't do it. And I don't. They got it. Look, dude. They've got to go get someone, whether it be Trotter, because like I told you. You grab Trotter, you shift Cole over to guard, and 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 Green's gone, right? Dotson can be the better. backup if it needs to be. Or look, if Dotson ends up playing better than Daniels, then 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 put you know, I don't know what. I to me, you got to go get somebody. They got look whether it be Treader or uh, Eric Fisher, I believe, is still available. Yeah, there's a you couple know, other guys out there. Those guys are injury prone and stuff. They're good and they'd be better. I'm at the point where they got to make a big move. Go out and ask every team in the league if they have a tackle available and make a trade. If it's a first round pick, do it because this is getting to the point where it's bad. They have no one to lean on because no one's playing well. Yeah, Nobody. look, there's Eric uh, Flowers is still out there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm looking at I'm looking at free agents right now on here on my phone trying to figure out like who else is available that could be decent or at least better. Um, yeah, that's really. To me, that's really about it that I'm seeing here. Between Trotter, p- grabbing him center, moving Mason Cole over, or Eric Flowers or uh, Fisher, one of those guys to get bump someone in. I don't, I don't know what they could do. I mean, Fisher's a, a multiple time Pro Bowler. Why not just give him a call? Right. I know it's late, but the longer you wait, the worse it's going to be. They're going to have to make a, a move at some point. I think they're going to stick with this group and pray it gets better and pray it improves. I mean, and I just I don't know I don't see it. It it ain't getting better. It, it is. It's not getting better. It got worse. It, and the run the run blocking wasn't even that good. Do you know who led the team in rushing this week? Wasn't it Sims? Well, Sims would yeah. If you don't out of running backs, it was Durant with one carry for seven yards. Seven yards led the <laughs> running backs in rushing because they didn't so, have any holes either. And we'll yeah, get to them. And we'll get to them next. But it, the run blocking was as bad as the pass block and. That's because they went up a level in defense. Jacksonville's got a very good defensive line and an exposed Steelers offensive line. Yeah, when they play good defensive bad. lines. It's going to be bad. Yeah. All right, let's flip to running back. Not much to say. Warren was good again. Three catches for 24 yards out of the backfield. Obviously, rushing yards, there was nothing to have. McFarland didn't really do much, but I don't even know how you, like we said about the quarterbacks, I don't know how you, how you grade these guys running up against that offensive line. It's just, it was impossible. How do you judge these guys? Yeah, like no running back, really. Benny Snell started. He wasn't that good. He had a touchdown. Nice little run to the corner of the end zone. Benny oh, Snell yeah, the was. dump off pass by uh, yeah. Mason. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that was really it. He was horrid running yeah. the ball. But he had a nice tackle on special I was going to say, special teams tackle. That's what's going to keep him on this team. You watch. Like, it was really nice. Like, I... Dude, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why he ever played offense. Like, I, I don't know why he didn't, I, you know. Switching the linebacker, right? <laughs> right, I, dude, I joked that on Twitter. I said, hey, I know a guy he could take a place of. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, somebody's joking on there about how, oh, you know, he wouldn't be able to do this or that. And I'm like, yeah, that's true, but it would be real no difference what we have there now. But anyways, uh, yeah, dude, like, honestly, the O-line was just so bad in, in every category, really. 
You know what I'm saying? Like even yeah. even run blocking, it was like, eh, you're not doing too good in that either. And they just they faced a good D line, and they sucked. They yeah. they couldn't they couldn't do shit against them. They could. And <sighs> tell you what, the game plan is going to change drastically when they start when they know they're facing these teams with a tough D line. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Oh yeah, it's going to go back to the to the Ben plays. Get rid of the ball in two and a half seconds. Or run around and scramble for your life. At least they can do that. You know, right. Don't have statues for quarterbacks now. So I don't. Uh, I don't man, know what they're. It's you know. funny. Maybe we overreacted too much last week on the offense being too good. I mean, we're overreacting this week. The offense maybe isn't this bad. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. But man, this offensive line is cause for concern. Yeah, dude. It's it's going to be well. It's going to be just like last year. It's going to be the same shit. Although I yeah. thought in some ways they look worse. This is the worst I've seen him look in a long time. Like I was like, "Whoa, this is like this I was, this just was, the way Trubisky every play was running for his like literally every play. That was that was the, that was discerning. Like it was just like Jesus, dude. Just once protect this, this guy. Give him, okay. you know, give him more than three seconds to you know, please. And it was three seconds. He was hoping for three. He only got like two or one second. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you know, I'm asking for that. And they couldn't give Matt either. But I, I just – it's so hard to judge. The running backs or still the quarterbacks. quarterbacks really, and running back in that situation, like, nope. good Lord, dude. All right, wide receivers. Good to see DJ back out there. He had a couple of good – two receptions for 33 yards. He was good. Claypool had a nice catch. Again, the Bro, back end of these – Did you sorry. see that one where DJ almost took it to the house? Yeah. I that love, was, I'm a De- Deontay Johnson super fan. I love watching him play. Pick it right down the fucking middle. And yeah. he got past his guy, and that guy reached out and just grabbed Clipped his, his leg. Yep. Or he was going to the house, dude. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. That would have been an amazing play. But, yeah, no, I, I thought that he did well. I thought Claypool did well, too. He had some uh, yeah. nice that nice catch. Uh, let's see. Pickens was kind of quiet this time, though. I was going to say, that was in my notes. Pickens was, Pickens was very quiet. Two catches for nine yards, I believe. The back end of this wide receiver, though, again, Tyler Sneed, Tyler Vaughn's, Dude, Steven Vaughn Sims. Had, these guys I got here, Vaughn had 56 yards receiving. Yes, four catches. Like that's, like, yeah, that's that's pretty good. He looked good. Uh, let's see. Um, Sneed had three for 17. Sims had another end around where he had 11 yards. Gentry only had one watch. catch, but he ran over four people to yeah. get them nine yards. I was like, yeah. good Lord. Dude, this when you a get deep, a small wide receiver class, when you get deep. a small slot corner on him, good luck. Cause if he catches that ball, he's going to throw them out of his fucking way and keep going. Like, it's yeah. just, you know, it's not going to. But no, for the most part, I thought the receivers, you know, when they were able to get the ball thrown to them, uh, you know, I thought they did pretty well. Um, but Vaughn's again, this is the second game in a row where Vaughn's been impressive, but I just yeah. he's so far down the totem pole, dude. I don't see him climbing all the way up to six unless it somebody depends. gets hurt. A couple more yeah, people if, get hurt. If Austin's hurt, then the sixth spot is up for grabs again because yeah. you know Boykin's going to make it. So it, it, it's that's going to be a tough choice. If, if they have to pick another receiver for the sixth spot between Vaughn, Sims, Sneed. That's that's good. They got they have depth. Yeah, a lot of depth. We didn't even bring up Gunner again. He had a pretty good game again. Right. I think he had a big catch call back for holding or something. He had a big reception. Yeah, I believe back. so too. So, all right, tight ends. You brought up Gentry. Move. I'll tell you that starting offense when Fryer move, Pickens, Claypool, and DJ are all out there at once, and Najee. It's going to be something as long as the line holds up. But that's it, that. You can't ask for a better it. group of talent. No, everything else is amazing. It, it's just a – they just don't <laughs> – set their line so freaking bad, dude. Like, I, I don't – I don't know. Right with that two catches for 35 yards. He was good. Hayward was quiet this time. Didn't do a hell of a lot, but I think he's a lock anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, we, we've already discussed, like, the top five, six guys we know are going to make – yeah, they're, they're not going to be going anywhere. It's just still going to be like that. Who's going to be their three running backs, though? That's that's the thing. Like, I think and we Najee. know now that Warren Warren's a lock behind Najee, but like, seems like it, right? But 
I'm starting to think McFarland might be the guy on the outside looking in. It's possible. Only, only because yeah, no. of, of special teams for Snell. Yeah. At this because point, I, I'm hoping they keep four. So and make Snell just a special teamer and let McFarland don't don't give up on McFarland just yet because what we saw last week is a positive and I'd like to see more out of him. Yeah, he had two carries for a yard. <laughs> yeah. He was um, killed it. Yeah, I you know. So I dude, Snell had three carries for negative two yards. His yeah. average was negative 0.7. We talked about it. Durant led. I think they had what twenty yards rushing total, if that. Yeah, about, probably about twenty-five yards. Yeah, Just, yeah. Durant had the longest uh, out of the running backs. Sims yeah. had the longest out of all of them rushing with yeah, eleven. On the end around, yeah. Trubisky with ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's know, right. The quarterback. I don't. Sample. Yeah, it just that was rough, dude. Facing a good D line. Two in trouble. Two different teams from this week. To last week, two different offenses all together. Well, because offensive line basically we beat that to death, but I don't know. I predict they're gonna they're gonna trade Mason for a pick that frees up what five, six mil about yeah, right around like five, less than five mil, I think. A right, less than takes them mil, yeah. back right, right. takes them back up to around 13 mil left in cap. And then I think they're gonna cut, you know, we we discussed this, they're gonna cut either Watt, Derek Watt, Snell, or Kilbury, right? That's going to free up more money, and they're going to go get on o -Lyman. I think they really are. I think they're going to see they have their choice. They're going to they watch to. the film. Because think about this. We're watching skits of film. They're watching every play, every, every o -Lyman, and they're watching it, you know, so dialed in. They've got to see what we're seeing, and it's bad across the board. Yeah. But I think Absolutely. if they can make one solid ad, I think that'll have an overall effect to help that out a lot just one could be huge but they need to do it now right because you need the guy that's going to play a preseason game and practice a couple of weeks with the team so he's ready to go week one you can't wait very much longer I, at I, this point I don't, it's getting late i don't disagree but think about this they let mason rudolph go a whole half yeah so that kind of makes me wonder hey watch him we're gonna let him go the whole second half you get a look at him so if they get rid of them, that frees up that money, and they can go get that guy this week. I'll tell you, the Jags are another team that could use a backup quarterback. Because those two quarterbacks after the starter came in, were dog shit. They were terrible. Yeah, they were bad. They, they were good. CJ Beathard <laughs> and um, the other kid, I don't remember his name. They were both terrible. Oh, Beathard was uh, the he was out of Iowa, if I remember correctly. Beathard, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, flipping over to the defense. We talked about it in the open. Alu Alu played. Voila, the run defense is better all of a sudden. And yep. he wasn't out there, the, you know, for more than three or four series, but he definitely makes a huge difference on this defensive line as far as run defense. He's just – he's the best run defender, and it's not even close. He's better than Cam. And he's better than anybody. Can he stay yeah. healthy all season long? That's the key. If he does, they're going to be so much better off for, dude. Like, it yeah. was just amazing how when he's out there, the way they look. Like, it was just – it was just such a night and day difference. No more of the 15, 20 yard carries, you yeah. know, it, it just didn't happen. And then when they tried to do the sweeps or the counters or any of that stuff, it didn't happen. But that was also in, in part to, uh, I thought Spillane had a really good game too. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about, but, the we'll get to, but I'm just yeah, saying but, that was that, between, right. between Alu Alu and him, like that really helped like wipe out a lot of those sweep attempts with ATNE and uh, you know, I just, I just something I, I noticed in the between Alu Alu, Ogan Joby, and Spillane, like they were having fits trying to get those runs going. Ogan Joby's going to be a good addition to this team. He's going to be, oh, dude, like I'm going to make I, you forget I, about Tua yeah. if he yeah, plays I'm, well, if he stays healthy too. He's another one. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad they went and got that guy. That was a really good signing by Khan. It really was. DeMarvin Leal, pretty good, but he's got some pass rush moves. He's he does. Gonna be something. He's going to be fun to watch this year. Well, he lined up at edge, you know. In college, and yeah. I, you know, so he probably was already developed those moves a lot, anyways. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yes. even though he gained weight to be a zero technique or a one or a three or whatever they want to do with him, he can still, he still got them moves, man. He's like, a pass rusher. He's yeah, I, he I, is, he and I, I, and he did really well last night. I thought he did really well. Um, I I noticed that there was pressure being applied a lot by uh, I had down here Alante Scott was applying pressure, and it was somebody opposite of him. 
It was uh, it was Avery. Well, when we go to Avery. outside linebackers, they they had a better game. It wasn't great, but it was better. It was better. Uh, well, let's jump right in outside linebackers. Um, you're right. Avery was pretty good. Delonte Scott was okay. He's not very good at run defense, though. He gets he gets shoved out of the way pretty easily. Um, he he was just applying a lot of pressure, though. Yeah. He had a lot of QB hurry. Like I don't know if they had that stat up or not, but I'm I'm sure he had some QB hurries uh, in the stat book. Because I'm telling you now, I, I saw him. It was him and Avery, but there was another. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, Tuska. It was somebody else. Uh, Ham- Hamilcar Rashad. He had a couple of. Uh, Here it is, Rashad. It's him. Yeah. It's Rashad. I That's have the guy I'm and- hoping develops into the to a to a third guy for the. Yeah, he looked good. Hopefully. He was coming from the opposite of Scott and was applying pressure too. Like it was, it was looking pretty good out there, man. Avery too. Avery almost had a tackle for a loss on a big, but he actually caused the guy not to get the first down. It was when I think they went for it on fourth. Or yeah. it was like third and four or something like that. And he got in the backfield and got him, almost took him down. But the guy tripped up and got past him, but still got, got tackled before he gets first down. Mm-hmm. Avery looked a lot better. Like, I, or wait, this is, did he even play last game? He didn't play no, last I didn't game. play last game. This is first game. Okay. So, yeah, so hopefully we'll see more. To get more that first him. glimpse of him was like, hmm. okay, this yeah, guy's not looking too bad. All I right. Agree. He was, he, even though I don't, I think they only had two sacks in the game. Yeah, it was only two. Um, TJ got one. TJ's, TJ's TJ, man. He plays two yeah, series. I, he has a sack. He's wreaking havoc. The guy's right. really ridiculous. Um, other than that, not much else. Linebacker, inside linebacker. Devin Bush, okay. Not great. We want to see something great out of this guy. We want to see him make a play. I don't think he embarrassed himself, but he didn't he made no impact. We basically didn't hear his name. He, the he had, I thought he had a, I could have sworn he had a sack. Did he have a sack? Yeah, he blitzed and had the sack, I believe. Oh, that's right. That's right. So he did that. That was nice. That's right. That's right. I had completely forgotten about that. Yep. It was good to see him pin his ears back and go, man. Like, you know, and actually go out. He's got know, that kind of athletic ability. He does. But, like, you know? you know, just seeing it, it's like you don't see it often. So it was nice to see that. Now, other than that, I think he had a couple tackles. I Look, that's all I'm asking, man, is just – Make the tackles. Stop the guy. Don't avoid contact. At the very least, if he just does that, it's it'll be at least fine. You know, it'll be to, fine. Yeah. Right. Correct. Like You'd I, like more from him, but you get what you get, and it's better than last week for sure. I just want to see the fucking effort. Yeah. Like, please, like, don't avoid contact. Don't get lost. Don't. Let, I want to see guys blow right by you, dude. You know who like, doesn't avoid yeah. contact? Mark Robinson. My dude. boy is. A, He's Dude. become my one of my favorite Steelers right yeah. now. He I that wide receiver into next yeah. week. Yes, I am enjoying watching this kid a lot. Like he's I make love. This team. He's yeah. gonna make this team, Dude, he brings the thump, yeah. and I mean, just absolutely trucks people. Like it's really fun to watch this guy. Like we talked about, we talked about development and watching him and everything. I didn't see him really get. I don't. I don't recall him getting hurt in coverage too much. I don't. I just. Recall him crushing that dude and making tag. I don't, I don't know, dude. Like this guy's really got potential. I see why they took him now. Like it, yeah. They know it's there. They know it. That they know it's there. They just got to tap into it and see if he unlocks it. I can't wait. It's not even like, like for me. It's not even this year. I can't wait to see this guy next yeah. year after it's, a it's full a, the season. Yeah. Yes, like you know, man. I, you yeah, know, I was I was highly impressed with Robinson. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him develop. And I, dude, I I can't wait till this guy like. When he hits full speed with this, yeah, yeah, look out. You, like you said, Spillane had a good game. Uh, at this point, Buddy Johnson, he's not making this roster. I watch him, no, and he's like invisible when he's out there. And he's, I don't know, he ran like a four, four forty, and it's like he's, he looks slow out there. I, 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 looks lost. Yeah, he does. And this is year he, two. It's not like he's he, a rookie. He looks like Bush uh, without the injury. Yeah, it's just like I, he looks slow as shit. And then when you say you look up his forty time, you're like, "What the hell?" Like, like yeah, it, doesn't it doesn't make any it sense. Doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. He's lost, dude. Like it's 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 overwhelming from this too much. He's just not. Yeah, it's, just, it's too fast for him. You know how they talk about the NFL and how fast it is. The difference yeah. between college and NFL is so fast, and it's too fast for him. He'll be done. He'll be gone. I think you're right. Um, let's jump to corner. Not much to really say. Uh, Justin Lane had a big interception. Yes. In the game. Yeah, uh, that was the think, turning point, really. Yeah. And it was more of a bad throw than a him play, but still, you got you to make the play. 
And I felt bad for Steele because he should have, he almost had an interception. Too. I was going to mention Steele next. Steele played pretty well. He had, he did. He had a couple of uh, good. Because we talked about Steele and we talked about um, Pierre and, and Lane, like who's going to step up here because one of them's going to go. And geez, dude, now I'm kind of like, I, maybe it's Pierre that goes. I've said Pierre all along, but apparently he's been running above Lane in, in practice. So a lot of people are saying Lane's the one that's going to go. I think he lanes a better special teams player too. So he might that have that. Over I think he is. See. I don't know. Pierre. I don't know. I don't know what they saw in him last year. And they're going to make him the starting corner. He had a great preseason. And then as soon as the regular game started, he, fell he was done. So he was yeah. Toast. And I, I don't, they, they have more invested in lane with him being a third round. Oh, yeah, pick. Absolutely. So I don't, you know, now mind you, they brought steel off the street too. So it, but still to me looks like, He's got that interception, that big play threat of bringing it back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't mm-hmm. see that from Pierre. You don't. And, like, he no. looked good last week, but this week he was quite a shit. You didn't hear anything. Yep. So, yep. yeah, I don't know. I think, dude, this last game, this last preseason game is going to be a huge factor in that. It's going to be huge for those three. Oh, yeah, for those three in particular, yes, because they need, they're all fighting for probably one spot. So they're right. going to have to really show out. Uh, safeties, DeMonte Casey tackles everything Dude, that comes next I, to him. He's amazing to watch, man. I love watching Casey play. Like, that dude's legit. I mean, he he just delivers tackle after tackle, and you're just like, damn, this yep. guy don't get ran over ever. And he, he's so solid. I mean, this is why they're looking probably to go more into the dime because they've got him who can just – he's a tackling machine out there. So if you get rid of one linebacker going into the dime, I don't think it's really going to affect him that much swapping him for Devin Bush. Yeah. I mean, you make a good point. I mean, that's just me, you know, and then if it's the other route where they want to have more of a cover guy out there and they put, you know, Norwood out there, then that's fine too. Cause Norwood can tackle too. They're both, he's capable as well. Yes. So I will not be surprised depending on who they face, if they deploy more dime out there, that, that's fine with me. I don't, I won't be surprised at all. This is the best safety group they've had in it is. deepest. I agree. You know, I just it's Terrell Edmonds had a good game. He had a really good game. Yes, he, he was well. downhill tackling yeah. like crazy too. He was he did really well. Like, yeah, the safety group. It, you're right. Like, but and the thing about it is they're all tackling safeties, like really good tackling safeties, and it's just something we haven't seen in a long time. That kind of depth at safety as well where they're really good at just coming downhill tackling and, and blitzing too. Cause Edmonds, I think had a nice blitz play too, where he almost got to he's the good quarterback. At blitzing. They should do it more often. He is. He is. He's, he's got Absolutely. a knack for that. He's got a little bit of yep. um, pass rusher in him. He know he, he gets after the quarterback. Mike Hilton. Um, almost like a, yeah, almost like that, a, Mike. A good, yeah. Mike Hilton's a good comp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Out of the secondary special teams. Well, we asked for Presley having to punt well, and he punted pretty damn well. He, Dude, he was crushing bombs. the ball. Yeah, yeah. safe after the safety. He yes, that ball almost out of the to the goal line from the yeah. twenty. And fantastic. That's yeah, the no. Presley Harvey we want to see. Yeah, dude. Like I was so happy to see this kid like play the way he did. Like after everything he went through last year, and I, you know, I crushed that kid last year. I really yeah. did. And I, I was like, well. you know, hey, let's see, let's see if if you know a year late, you know, see how he how he does let's see if it, if he had, did have indeed those distractions hurting him and i'm like god damn like my man is just kicking the shit out of the ball oh he was fantastic so you know hey it looks like we're good to go there too dude mm-hmm. like this is again and we just keep bringing this up we have not had a special teams that this solid all around in a long time and i think mcfarland had a good kick return it, he had a real it, good kick return right isn't it amazing when you're not paying a quarterback $40 million how you can go and sure up your special teams, your safety groups, yeah. your wide receiver groups, your running back groups? Right. It's amazing to me how much more we've sure up all these other positions now that we're not spending that kind of money. Yep. It's, a, it's it incredible. It makes all the difference in the world. It really does. That's why a lot of teams now want to win with a rookie quarterback. They want to win a Super Bowl with a rookie quarterback before they get too expensive, yep. and they got to pay them the big bucks. Then everything gets more difficult. Yeah. And you got to cut corners at every other position. You know, you can't, especially the quarterback contracts now, they're getting freaking outrageous. It's like 50 million bucks. Well, it's- it makes me, it makes me like 
you look at teams like the Ravens when they paid Flacco and how downhill they went after that. Yeah. And there are other teams too. But then I think about, say, the Patriots with Brady and how Brady didn't want big money. Remember, he mm-hmm. wasn't taking big money. So that allowed them to go spend elsewhere. And look what happened. I mean, look at all the, you know, and there's controversy that too. But, you know, I'm just saying in general. Yeah, no, yeah, no that, like, was, that made a big difference for them. If you look at that, a quarterback that didn't want $40 million a year or whatever, how much I helped them spend it somewhere else. And now I'm looking at the Steelers like, holy shit, like this is really awesome to be able to shore up all these different positions to have that depth now. The only one that still sucks is the O-line. <laughs> so it's like, all right, time to spend. Let's go. Let's go shore up that O-line, please. But besides that, dude, everything else I thought looked so much better. It really makes you wonder, right? Because ever since, and I, I, I wrote this in my notes because I wanted to bring it up. Ever since Munchak left, this offensive line has taken a nosedive and it can't get out. And they're on their they third O line coach yeah. since then. Yeah, Sean Surratt, Adrian Clem, and now Pat Meyer. And right. they're getting worse every time. It, yes. I, I, I don't like. Is it the players or is it the coach? I, I just don't get why this, they can't get their shit together. I, I thought it was kind of telling whenever the guy that took uh, Clem's place last year. It seemed to improve the offense, but he still left. And a lot of that was rumored to be because of Canada. A lot of people don't work want to work with Canada. I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I'm just saying. Like I, that's so you're not exactly going to get a top O line coach or just offensive coaches in general if they don't if they don't like or get along with the offensive coordinator. I mean, it's, it's possible, but those other two guys were here before. Yeah. But look Kenneth at Clem, got, my yeah. man, Clem had a yeah. new job waiting for him and didn't even like tell the Steelers what he was doing. Like he was just like, Hey, by the way, I'm out. Like that's pretty telling dude. You're having, you're, you're coaching for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You take off to go to the yeah, Oregon make, Ducks. Like what? Sense whatsoever. Like I'm just saying the whole thing was strange to me. So, and then the guy after him, does well and goes nope i'm out too like yeah. yeah it's something there maybe it has something to do with canada it, it's that's the I'd rumor like hope, i'm just i'm speculating like hope not because overall i think this offense now that we see what they can do i'm kind of liking so i'm hoping he's not going to be an issue to the other coaches and eventually they're going to have to you know do something about him because so far i like what i see i will now tell that, yeah now that roethlisberger is gone and they actually have mobile quarterbacks um, that's all I have. If you, do you have anything else to ring up about the game? It was like we said, no, was... that's, that's really it. Uh, I didn't enjoy the game. I, I bitched a lot. Oh, um, it's brutal to watch. And I, you know, it was cool to see them come back at the end and all that stuff, you know, whatever, oh, but, uh, well, I missed a field goal too. I, I wanted to yeah, mention special teams, yeah, but that shouldn't yeah, be anything to worry about. Hopefully just we'll a see. blimp, nothing to, nothing to really worry about. Um, but no, I just, um, that had to be a big – just to see the O-line and how bad they look has to be a big red flag for them, and hopefully they go and do something. That's it. And then next you know, next week, it's just going to be, you know, all their guys that are trying to make the – make you know, not get cut, make the 53. That's what this is going to be about. So, yep. we'll, these yeah, are all this, – this game will be solely about depth. Yes. And an audition for Mason Rudolph. Yep. They have to that, cut another five players by Tuesday, so we'll see – Hey, you know what? We might see Oladukun next week. That's a possibility. That's yeah, a possibility. If, I think I think we yeah. will. He's getting practice. He's getting practice finally. So yeah, you could I see know. him for a quarter in the fourth. So that season, so that would be cool if we could see him. It would be nice. Yep. See, if there's anything there to, to get excited about. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'll probably come back Friday-ish, Thursday-ish for another podcast somewhere around there before the game. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> there'll be a lot of um. A lot of news, I'm sure, between now and then with the five cuts to come. Offensive line move, hopefully, maybe, possibly. Yep. Pray. All right. That'll wrap it up for today's podcast. You can find me on Twitter at SteelSank16. You can find Dave at M underscore Corb. You can find my blog at SteelerSanctuary.com. Until next week, thanks for listening.